Hello everybody, so I hope you're all doing well. So today we're going to talk about um, the basic structure of the cell, especially the organelles and its function. I hope uh, um, <clears throat> this video will help you to, um, with the lessons that we have uh, we are covering this week. And um, so let me switch it over to uh, the slide. So what do you see here is the basic a uh, computer generated model of a cell which uh, which shows pretty much electron microscopic um, image so this is an eukaryotic cell because it has a very clear um, nucleus right here and um, which is in blue colored and that is the main controlling center which is located um, uh, in this particular cell it is around the middle of the cell so there are two types of eukaryotic cell one is a plant cell and an animal cell they are called eukaryotic again because of the presence of the clear nucleus so the rest of the structures what you see here scattered in the cytoplasm including nucleus is called organelles and these organelles are very small they are microscopic we have to use a microscope to see them and they do different functions for the cell and depends on which cell we are talking about if it's a brain cell if the, or if it is a blood cell it carry oxygen and if it's a muscle cell it helps uh, mechanically to do all the functions and these organelles they are scattered in the cytoplasm and uh, some of the organelles are covered with a membrane uh, like a plasma membrane or a cell membrane uh, it is covered and some of the organelles are not. The organelle that is not covered by the membrane is mainly ribosome, which is uh, an organelle that make proteins for the cell. The first organelle we're going to talk about is nucleus. It's, as you all know, nucleus is the controlling center of a, of a cell. So you can see that the nucleus is located right here. It occupies around one-fourth of a, a space of a cell in this particular image. This is a real um, a transmission electron micrograph of um, the nucleus, but this actually just enhanced with the color. So what do you see right here is a nucleolus, a little bit darkened region right here. And then in this area, what we see is um, uh, the DNA, which is uh, not that visible in this image. So the DNA is located inside the um, nucleus as well. So this nucleus is bounded by or covered by um, a double layered membrane. You can see that it's a, there's a boundary for uh, this nucleus. So I'm going to enhance that nuclear envelope right here. The nuclear envelope or the nuclear membrane is a double layered membrane. This is one layer, this is another layer, and there's a space in between. Also, this um, membrane is um, keep on communicating with outside uh, through this nuclear envelope and um, so the what do you see right here is uh, this picture is the image that shows the nuclear pores on the surface of the nucleus and this is another enhanced image these yellow dots right here are the nuclear pores so outside of the nucleus it communicate with the endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum comes right close to the nucleus so Inside the nucleus, you see the DNA, which is completely scattered and loosely arranged in a form called chromatin. And during the time of cell division, this chromatin pack condenses and turns into chromosome. It's something like before we move out of the house, we pack our stuff. So before the cell undergo division, it just pack and condenses and turn into chromosome. And then it moves the chromosome to the two sides of the cell. The next organelle we're going to talk about is cytoskeleton. You can see that it is similar to the skeleton for our body. There are two types, two components in the cytoskeleton. One is the microtubules. You can see that they are tubes. And these microtubules are made up of a protein called a tubulin. And the second component is these green lines. You can see that these green lines are pretty much um, made up of um, um, actin uh, protein. So they, they are called the microfilaments. So actin and tubulin, those are the two types of protein that make up the microfilaments and microtubules. So now let's talk about what is the main function of this. Cytoskeleton give the rigidity and strength and shape to the cell. 
also look at this. The, during time of cell division, what you see here is the chromosomes, and these chromosomes are pulled away from the middle to the two sides of the cell by these spindle fibers. You can see these black line, which is called them as spindle fibers. The spindle fibers pull these chromosomes to the two sides of the cell. And so that is pretty much made up of microtubule array network. So this is this really helps in cell division as well. The next uh, organelle that we're going to talk about is mitochondria. Mitochondria is like the powerhouse of the cell because um, the mitochondria generates the power for the cell. It's something like your fireplace. So fireplace burns the firewood to generate the heat. So mitochondria burns glucose to generate the heat of for our body so it has its own DNA and you can see that outside of the mitochondria it has a brown membrane and inside brown is just an enhanced color don't assume that it is brown always and inner membrane has a lot of holdings we call them cristae so this cristae help um, actually help to increase the surface area so the mitochondria can burn more sugar. So there is more room to, sugar, uh, to burn the sugar. The process is called cellular respiration. And you see this blue area right here is filled with a lot of enzymes and catalytic enzymes. So that helps the, help to break down uh, the glucose whenever it's needed. That area is called matrix. The next organelle we're going to talk about is rough endoplasmic reticulum or RER. So rough endoplasmic reticulum looks like this. It, um, it usually spaces out right next to the nucleus. And these black dots are ribosomes because the ribosomes attach to it. So it appearance look rough. That's why it is called rough ER. So the second type of endoplasmic reticulum, we call them smooth ER. So what you see right here is the nuclear membrane. And adjacent to that is the rough ER. And this part right here is the smooth ER. And the smooth ER um, also are responsible for mainly, um, you know, it make up the membrane lipids and steroids, regulate the calcium in the muscle cells and destroy the toxic substances, especially in the liver. Those are the main functions of the smooth ER. Both the smooth and rough ER uh, pretty much um, controls or regulate um, the transport of materials in and around the cell. So that's kind of the function. The next organ we're going to talk about is the ribosomes. So the ribosomes are the only organ that is not bounded by the by the membrane, and they are pretty much made up of proteins and RNA. The, the small r right here represents the ribosomal RNA. The ribosome make protein by putting all these amino acids together. So these circles represents the amino acids. So when we combine these circles together, we get the finally a protein, and the process is called protein synthesis. The next organ we're going to talk about is Golgi bodies, and the Golgi bodies um, usually looks like stack of pancakes. It has one uh, receiving end we call cis end, and it has a shipping end called trans end. Mainly, they are the UPS of the cell. They receive the chemicals from the ER and the ribosome and process it. And maybe they sometimes they combine many proteins, sometimes they break the proteins and process it and put it inside this transport vesicles and send it outside the cell. Um, so in the, that is why we call them um, UPS of the cell because they modify, sort, and package molecules from ER for either for storage or transported out of the cell. The next organelle we're going to talk about is lysosomes. The lysosomes um, are tiny sacs that are filled with extremely powerful enzymes. Main function is to uh, pretty much they eat up uh, or kill or destroy any worn out cells or um, you know kill any other pathogen which attacks our cells so they are basically responsible for um, you know try act as a trash compactor so they just clean up the cell sometimes if the cell is about to die it is time to die it just release these enzymes and kill itself that is called autolysis the next organ we're going to talk about is cilia and flagella. So what you see here is uh, cilia are short hair-like structure. You can see that this is a microorganism called uh, paramecium, which is a protozoan. Live in freshwater. They have these tiny hair-like structures outside. It helps 
to move that animal in water. The other two right here, this is the sperm that contain only one long structure, which we call them flagella. And right here is a bacterium that contain three flagellum as well. So these structures help the organisms to move around. One of the places that we find the cilia in our body is the ciliated epithelium. If you look at this um, picture right here, this is a cell's lining of the epithelium or, uh, or the cell's inner lining found in our um, airway. In the trachea, you can see these cilia attached to it. It helps to um, you know, spread the mucus and also uh, wash away any dust or any particles that happen to come in. The next organ we're going to talk about is a vacuole. So you can see that in plant cell, you see a la large, big vacuole um, that store um, mainly all the food substances or whatever the plant wants to store it, it's stored right here. There is no vacuole in bacterial cell. If at all it's found, there will be some uh, small vacuole in animal cells as well. The next and final uh, organ we're going to talk about today is the chloroplast, which is the primary organ that help to uh, make food in the plant kingdom for the whole entire planet. If the chloroplast is not there, there is no food for the planet. So the chloroplast has an ability to absorb the sunlight and then make sugar or the glucose and store it in different forms in the planet. So that's why we could, um, we could just go and buy these vegetables and eat it, so including the starch or corn or whatever. So if you look at the chloroplast under the electron microscope, it has a double protective layer right here, out, out, outer membrane and inner membrane. And there's a stroma or the fluid inside. And also you see some structures which is stacked one above the other. We call them granum. The whole entire stack is called granum. And each individual disc is called the thylakoid. So inside the thylakoid, we find the green pigment, which is called the chlorophyll. So also, these grana are connected. You can see the, here this yellow lines which connects this granum. So they all work together. The green colored pigment is found inside the thylakoid and they all work together to um, make in the sugar making process. So um, also the chloroplast when you look this is another view you can see outer membrane inner membrane and you can see the green pigment is located inside the thylakoid. They are mainly, um, main function is to make sugar for the whole entire, um, you know, world, uh, biosphere. So it also contain its own DNA. So that's all guys, the important organelles and its function. So I hope it is helpful. And if you have any questions, email me or ask in the classroom. Thank you very much and uh, have a wonderful day.